get into? Uh, I guess, uh, let me start with something you wrote recently, uh, saying that in two months, many corners of the world have gone from fighting over toilet paper to fighting against racism and white supremacy. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, and, and first of all, I mean, it, it just, but again, I mean, this is not only reckoning with this history, but I think a lot of other countries are looking to the U.S. for inspiration um, to rise up against the issues in their own countries. So really, this is this is a fundamental shaking of a world order, I would say, a, a racial world order. Given how important this issue is, and given how dangerous this pandemic is, how do you begin to approach the fact that, how do you communicate that? How do you deal with that? How do you relate with that? Or, or is your position just, this is too important, pandemic can deal, is gonna have to just wait? The fact that people are out there willing to risk their lives um, in terms of the pandemic, in ter a, a, a pandemic that kills because you're in contact with people, that connection, closeness is dangerous. And yet it's that connection and it's that closeness and it's that solidarity that is driving this conversation is driving change and is driving reform. Hello everyone, welcome. It's great to be back after a week-long vacation from all this madness. And before we begin, I just want to let you all know that I'm now over on Parlor. I hear that it could be a Twitter killer. I guess we won't know until everybody goes over there and signs up, so check me out when you're done with this video. So yeah, you read the headline, right? Once again, the enemy of the people are earning their label, this time actually threatening violence against a group of people based on their skin color and gender. And from the freaking editor of the Washington Post, no less. Her name is Karen Attia, so make sure to let the Washington Post know how you feel about racist hate mongers being given free reign to incite violence with their paper. Now, before I get to the stuff that's absolutely gonna make your head explode, give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer for my subscribers. Have you found yourself grazing at the fridge a lot more than usual these past couple months? If so, you're certainly not alone, and as a result, you could see your weight creeping up too. I'm fairly sure that if you've ever walked into a health food store or flipped on the television, you've no doubt heard of the ketogenic diet, or keto. It's one of the most popular diet trends on the earth right now. My wife's really into it, but me, not so much. I just don't like the foods that you have to eat. We all know that your health is paramount, and during these trying times, we got a a very special offer in place. Be one of the first to reap the rewards that Keto Elevate can bring to your life right now and take advantage of our 51% off and free shipping to the U.S. That's www.ketowithdronetech.com. We're going to get right back to more about Karen. <laughs> Actually, that's funny. It just occurred to me that her name is Karen and the irony of that. So Karen clearly hates white people and white women in particular, tweeting out, quote, The lies and tears of white women hath wrought. The 1921 Tulsa massacre. The murder of Emmett Till. Exclusion of black women from feminist movements? 53% of white women voting for Trump? White women are lucky that we are just calling them Karens and not calling for revenge. I'm just saying, be happy we are calling for equality and not actual revenge. <laughs> but you are calling for violence and revenge and you're just trying to be sneaky about it, which isn't working very well. And keep in mind, this is a global editor for the Washington Post, one of the biggest news organizations on the planet. Think about that for a minute. We've gone from the Me Too movement to actually openly calling for revenge against women based on on their skin color. Her rationalization for this is one event a hundred years ago, the murder of one person almost a hundred years ago, that sure was tragic and evil, but it was one incident in the distant past and has absolutely nothing to do with women right now. They want to keep pointing to these Karen videos where white women are calling the police on black men, where we don't even know the full circumstances, only what's in that video. The only reason those videos are everywhere is because the media has focused on them specifically. What about all the white people that are being beaten up by black people? Twitter is flooded with videos of this, but you never see them on CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS.
CBS, NBC, or any mainstream news organization. Should white people use this black on white violence as a rallying call against black people? Of course not, but we're dealing with racist sociopaths here. So following that logic doesn't mean that the media does want negative backlash on the white community. It certainly seems that way. Like I pointed out many times, the statistics are very clear. When it comes to black murder, black people are black people's biggest threat. When it comes to intra-racial murder, there's more black on white murder than there is white on black. And this has been consistent from 1980 to the present. But again, these are facts that the media has done their very best to bury. So back to Karen, she also lists one of these reasons for revenge is that 53% of women voted for Trump. The editor of one of the country's largest news organizations is calling for racial violence against people because of who they voted for. This should concern everyone because if we're going to start killing each other over who we voted for, this country is finished. So Karen has since deleted that post, but has filled her Twitter feed with other outrageous statements such as, but here's the thing about Karen memes. The dark side of hand wringing about how Karen hurts white women's feelings is that it is a distraction from how everyday white women uphold white supremacy through violence, aggression, and weaponizing of their gender. Again, she's making these broad generalizations about an entire group of people, literally hundreds of millions of people, based on videos of six or seven people out of 200 million total. Just imagine that we were using that same logic when it came to all these videos of black on white violence. But we can't do that because there's 45 million black people in this country and even though we may have dozens or even hundreds of videos of black on white violence that's minuscule you can't judge an entire group of people based on that small tiny fringe of groups yet here we are with the editor of a worldwide news organization literally doing that to a group of people in this country how does this person still have a job where is all of this hate coming from she's a first generation american who managed to become editor of one of the country's biggest newspapers is that white supremacy? She's being allowed to spout racist threats of violence against innocent people because of her skin color. Is that white supremacy? It's yet another glaring example of how the US media has been taken over by extreme far left racists who clearly have every intention of starting up some sort of racial conflict. This is why we call them enemy of the people. It's not just racist black Karens at the Washington Post who are mind blowingly obvious in their activism, but also pudgy white Andy Richter lookalikes named Philip Bump. This guy. So this guy writes an article which appears to be a fact check against Trump, but actually ends up confirming Trump is actually correct. This is the type of propaganda these leftists in the media are now reduced to, clearly hoping that the reader reads the headline and then just moves on. That headline being, Trump keeps claiming that the most dangerous cities in America are all run by Democrats. They aren't. Oh, but they are, Bump. They are and I can use your own article as a reference. And you hear about certain places like Chicago, and you hear about what's going on in Detroit and other cities, all Democrat run. Every one of them's Democrat run. 20 out of 20, the 20 worst, the 20 most dangerous, our Democrat run. He's almost exactly right. He probably should have just said the overwhelming majority of the most dangerous cities. But he's mostly right, as you can see here on this graphic, which was in the supposed fact check article. As you can clearly see, there is one red state on that list way at the bottom. The rest, deep blue. This brain genius even admits as much, saying, quote, Most of the current mayors of these cities are Democrats. Two of the mayors of cities with the most reported violent crimes overall, though, are independents, and one, the mayor of Jacksonville, Florida, is a Republican. Among the 20 cities with the most violent crime per capita, one is a Democrat. <laughs> The independent mayor of Springfield, Missouri. Trump would no doubt throw off that detail, decrying it as fake news. The revelation that this assertion was only slightly wrong. <laughs> and in fairness, it actually doesn't matter that four of the 32 cities listed above have non-democratic mayors, because it doesn't really matter that most other mayors are Democrats. It doesn't really matter. You got that? The media is a political arm of the Democrat Party and will never generate any scrutiny or negative criticism of Democrat-run cities because that's just not in the agenda. It appears that Democrats in Democrat-run cities die in darkness as the Washington Post buries all the bad news. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. It really helps this channel. And after being gone for a week, I could really use the help. If you'd like to support this channel further, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those 
those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.